let's shift our focus now to something else. Uh, Nigeria's uh, continuous uh, borrowing, Mr. President. Uh, his loan request of $6.1 billion has been granted. Joining me to get some perspective tonight here in the studios, a chartered economist, Samson Shoebi. He joins us live on the program. Samson, thank you so much for coming uh, tonight. Yeah, I need to give you a lot of credit. Uh, we understand you have a very, very busy schedule. Uh, you've always joined the program virtually from Southampton in the UK. So good to have you here. Um, well, the president is set to borrow again. Um, you seem not to be very pleased with the way we keep borrowing here as a nation. Why is that so? Okay, so um, to generate wealth in any society, the first thing is you must run the system in such a way that it is profiting. Mm. If you continue to borrow without maximizing the borrowing to instigate or initiate a profit or positivity, unfortunately, you continue to record negativity. And that's what we are seeing that 95% of our revenue goes into servicing of loans. If those loans were active loans that has capacity to initiate and approve profit profiteering or profitability, Mm -hmm. They would have been able to pay out themselves without additional revenues being used to pay them. I don't know if you understand what I'm saying. Yes. What you have seen is that the type of expenditures that we we use these loans to do are not expenditures that eventually accrue profit profitability for the country. And what then, what you then get is the fact that we run those loans continue to accrue because we are just expanding them. Mm. And they continue to increase. Now we have about 95% of our loans servicing repayment, you know, taking, our loan servicing repayment, taking about 95% of our revenue, mm. which is not sustainable. We cannot continue to look like, you look around a country, a society like this, on loans to the total of 95%. It, our government needs to be more strategic with their decisions in terms of loaning. Oh, yeah. you know, if a proper company borrowing loan will have had a strategy of how long the loan will become self-sustaining that they want to put this loan into this capital project that this capital project will end up accruing profit that will then pay out the loan but in our case that is not the reality mm. what we get is that we keep on increasing anytime we need funds to for something we have to go out and and, and why are we not even making enough revenue to offset our loans without us having to run into this kind of issues? We have not been able to domesticate our economy. Most of our purchases as of today are still largely import dependent. Now, forex is not fair to us as a country, and what you get is that I'm sure you saw in that loan request the supplementary budget that Mr. President requested. Yes. The National Assembly had to increase it by a tone of about 87 billion. Why did that? Why did they do that? Because there is a change in forex. Most of what they are going to be spending out of that fund, who, who are forex dependent expenditures. We don't produce ammunition ourselves. You know, everything is dependent on foreign exchange. So, for how long are we going to keep doing this? We need to find a way to begin to domesticate our purchases. And that it is only when we begin to do that. We can control every facet of our expenditure. Otherwise, we continue to plunge ourselves into more loans and more loans per time. There, there are those who believe that, um, I mean, because I, I spoke to Pro Buharis, I, I'm, I'm not sure if we have um, one of them joining us uh, virtually, Murphy. He joined us earlier on the program. I'm not sure. I'm getting feedback that he's not online, but hopefully uh, he will join us very shortly. But um, there have been this argument back and forth, especially for Pro Buharis, that. Um, even the greatest country in the world, America, still borrows. Why, are we not, why should Nigerians be afraid of uh, the continuous uh, borrowing in the nation? Okay, so loan in itself is not a bad thing to borrow. Everybody borrows. But what you do with borrowing is what matters. How you expend that borrowing to ensure that you are able to convert the borrowing to meaningful activity that ends up gainful projects that can bring about profiteering. Mm. You know, but if you fail, for example, when uh, the national uh, the president was talking, he said 
the National Assembly should see to it that those funds were does not go into frivolous expenditures. Why did he use that word? Because previous ones that have been borrowed are gone into diverted into, into frivolous expenditures, and nobody has fully accounted for these expenditures to ensure that we fully maximize the use of these funds. Is it that we did not apport, we did not allocate funds to buy military address in the 2021 budget? Why is Mr. President bringing additional almost a, almost a trillion naira as supplementary budget? Is it that we are just aware that we have security issues in the country that we are combating? These security issues in the country have been happening from 2017, 2018, 2019. It has grown so wide. All these all the budgetary allocations to support the mil our military. What has happened to it? What about the military uh, gadgets that you've been buying? Are they no longer useful anymore? You know, so we need to look at this issue. And I think the major problem Nigeria is having is we are not running Nigeria as a business. We are running it as if it's a money-making factory that we just put our hands into a bus and we pull out funds and we spend. A government that is conscientious, that is that is that is focusing on 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 dutiful spend, uh, spending or management, financial management will be more conscious about their expenditure. Their positioning and attitude to expenditure will resonate the reality of that. People are suffering, I tell you. The Nigerian government is not earning enough income to foot abuse anymore. So we need to be more creative and be more strategic. But if you ask me if borrowing is a good thing, borrowing in its, in its, in its, in its right sense is a good thing, but the major bonus lies on what you do with borrowing, what you do with funds. You know, what do you do with the phone? Those are the questions we should be asking. Uh, all right. Uh, let's see. I, I think uh, Murphy is uh, standing by now, political analyst. Uh, Murphy, uh, pardon live from the Ojo area here in Lagos. Uh, Murphy is, is also the secretary network for promotion of good governance. Murphy, if you can hear us loud and clear, enable your audio so we can uh, get uh, talking as we get your perspective about uh, this very latest uh, loan request, uh, $6.1 billion as granted by the Senate, and then of course requested by Mr. President. Murphy, what are your initial thoughts? All right, I'm, I'm not sure we have uh, Murphy's audio here yet, so we'll see how we can get back with him. Very, very shortly. This is fact. Let's take like a, a, a breather. We'll be back in just a moment. Stay with us. The Senate do approve the request of the President of the Federal Republic of Nigeria for the issuance of 3 billion US dollars, or not more than 6 million 183 million 81,643 dollars. 40 cents euro bond in the international capital market for the implementation of the new external borrowing of 2 trillion 343 billion 383 million 942,848 naira for the financing of part of the deficit authorized in 2021. That this is not a new loan, this is a borrowing plan that we approved before with the budget 2021. 
what we have done is simply to provide the resolutions, the necessary resolutions that will enable the government to go and borrow. Thank you very much, distinguished colleagues. And I want uh, to also advise the executive arm of government that any cent, every cent counts. Our committees should be alive and alert on how the funds that we borrowed will be put to use. All right, thanks for staying with us. Um, I'm not sure we're able to fix uh, the hitches yet to speak with Morphe and get the other side of, um, of course, the, the worries aspect of these whole loans. But then again, I mean, uh, very recently the Senate president uh, described our country, our dear, beloved Nigeria, as a country that is poor. Uh, we, have, we have to borrow. He practically justified the need why uh, we, we have to borrow as a nation. Uh, my, my, my question is, um, do you even think that the Senate is going to ensure checks and balances in terms of the execution of these loans, how, what the money uh, you know, it's been spent on or is used for? I understand the, uh, the government very says it's going to be used for infrastructure, transportation and all of that. But the Senate, of course, is supposed to be there to ensure the checks and balances. Are, are you sure the Senate can stand up and do well, such? I'm, I'm sorry to say, though, and this is my personal opinion, you know, and I am I'm sure a lot of Nigerians actually share my sentiments on this issue. I'm not sure majority, 90% of our politicians who occupy political offices actually care about Nigerians. I think bulk of the time, interests are personal, and that's why we see them multiple times fight over elected positions you know mm -hmm. otherwise we will have seen that when this request came we will have asked mr president and the executive arm what they've done and how they've expended the previous loans that have been gotten we have gotten repatriated funds how well have these funds been put to use people the national assembly were designed to, to, to monitor and supervise the activities of the executive. But in my own opinion, I'm sorry, I think they are more like a rubber stamp, you know, than actually a supervisor. Their role is to supervise and ensure that actually the executive arm of government do the needful when it comes to executive activities. Right. But what I've seen and observed, and, and that's why a lot of Nigerians do not trust the system anymore, is that it's more like a bad end of a thing. Executive brought something, the rubber stamp it, and it goes on. So if we want to be purposeful and we want to be fruitful, I think it is our duty as leaders, knowing fully well that what we do today is gonna to be an heritage, you know, for tomorrow, it's gonna to be a testimony. People are gonna talk about it. Mm. You know, we will do live our life right. We we are not doing enough. We are not doing enough as leaders. Our political office holders are not doing these things with consciousness of the fact that Nigeria is poor. When you come around and say Nigeria is poor, the lifestyle our political office holders live, does it reflect that we are poor? The, the Nigerian uh, National Assembly of, uh, office holders are one of the highest paid in the world. If we are poor, are they supposed to, is it supposed to be like that? Have you had anyone in Nigerian National Assembly saying that they are foregoing salaries or that benefit because Nigeria is poor, all you always get is that as, uh, civil servants should sacrifice, that there is no money, we cannot pay this, <laughs> we cannot pay this amount. But when it's you really put, sad. it's really sad, when you put the civil servant minimum wage side by side international, you know, their colleagues, counterparts in the international world, you find out that the difference is incomparable. Now, when you put this take home of an average National Assembly office holder side by side, their counterparts, you also see the difference. So you now begin to look at it. Where does the interest of our office holders, political office holders, where does their interest lie? Okay. Is it in their pockets or in the pockets of Nigerians or in the heart of Nigerians? We need to ask that question. All right, Samson, that's, that's a good place to anchor our conversation. I'd like to thank you most kindly. Uh, Chartered Economist uh, Samson Shwebe for your perspective on 
uh, Nigeria's economy as well as uh, the continuous borrowing plan of this particular administration. We'll check in with you again uh, uh, subsequently. And uh, thank you for always uh, saying yes, I mean, opening the doors to so all our invitations, whether in Nigeria and of course when you're outside the country. Thank you so much for coming tonight. Thank you for having me.